The Battle of Vukovar was an 87-day siege of Vukovar in eastern Croatia by the Yugoslav People's Army, supported by various paramilitary forces from Serbia, between August and November 1991. Before the Croatian War of Independence the Baroque town was a prosperous, mixed community of Croats, Serbs and other ethnic groups. As Yugoslavia began to break up, Serbia's President Slobodan Milosevic and Croatia's President Franjo Tudman started to pursue nationalist politics. In 1990, an armed insurrection was started by Croatian Serb militias, supported by the Serbian government and paramilitary groups, who seized control of Serb-populated areas of Croatia. The JNA began to intervene in favor of the rebellion, and conflict broke out in the eastern Croatian region of Slavonia in May 1991. In August, the JNA launched a full-scale attack against Croatian-held territory in eastern Slavonia, including Vukovar. Vukovar was defended by around 1,800 lightly armed soldiers of the Croatian National Guard and civilian volunteers. Against 36,000 JNA soldiers and Serb paramilitaries equipped with heavy armor and artillery. During the battle, shells and rockets were fired into the town at a rate of up to 12,000 a day. At the time, it was the fiercest and most protracted battle scene in Europe since 1945, and Vukovar was the first major European town to be entirely destroyed since the Second World War. When Vukovar fell on 18 November 1991, Several hundred soldiers and civilians were massacred by Serb forces and at least 31,000 civilians were expelled from the town and its surroundings. Most of Vukovar was ethnically cleansed of its non-Serb population and became part of the self-declared Republic of Serbian Krajina. Several Serb military and political officials, including Milosevic, were later indicted and in some cases jailed for war crimes committed during and after the battle. The battle exhausted the JNA and proved a turning point in the Croatian war. A ceasefire was declared a few weeks later. Vukovar remained in Serb hands until 1998, when it was peacefully reintegrated into Croatia. It has since been rebuilt but has less than half of its pre-war population and many buildings are still scarred by the battle. Its two principal ethnic communities remain deeply divided and it has not regained its former prosperity. Background Vukovar is an important regional center on Croatia's eastern border, situated in eastern Slavonia on the west bank of the Danube River. The area has a diverse population of Croats, Serbs, Hungarians, Slovaks, Ruthenians and many other nationalities, who had lived together for centuries in relative harmony before the Croatian War. It was one of the wealthiest areas of Yugoslavia before the war. Vukovar's long-standing prosperity was reflected in one of Croatia's finest ensembles of Baroque architecture. The region underwent major demographic changes following the Second World War, when its ethnic German inhabitants were expelled and replaced with Serb and Montenegrin settlers from elsewhere in Yugoslavia. In the last Yugoslav census in 1991, the Vukoval municipality, which included the town and surrounding villages, was recorded as having 84,189 inhabitants, of whom 43.8% were Croats, 37.5% were Serbs and the remainder were members of other ethnic groups. The town's population was 47% Croat and 32.3% Serb. From 1945, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was governed as a federal socialist state comprising six newly created republics, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro and Macedonia. The current border between Serbia and Croatia was defined in 1945 by a Yugoslav federal government commission which assigned areas with a majority Serb population to the Socialist Republic of Serbia and those with a Croatian majority to the Socialist Republic of Croatia. This left a large Serb minority in Croatian territory. After Yugoslavia's leader Josip Broz Tito died in 1980, 
Long suppressed ethnic nationalism revived and the individual republics began to assert their authority more strongly as the federal government weakened. Slovenia and Croatia moved towards multi-party democracy and economic reform, but Serbia's authoritarian communist president Slobodan Milosevic opposed reform and sought to increase the power of the communist Yugoslav government. In 1990, Slovenia and Croatia held elections that ended communist rule and brought pro-independence nationalist parties to power in both republics. In Croatia, the Croatian Democratic Union Party of Franjo Tudman took office with Tudman as president. Tudman's program was opposed by many members of Croatia's Serbian minority, towards whom he was overtly antagonistic. The Serb Democratic Party of Croatia, supported by Milosevic, denounced the HDZ as a reincarnation of the nationalist fascist Ustase movement, which had massacred hundreds of thousands of Serbs during the Second World War. From mid-1990, the SDS mounted an armed rebellion in Serb-inhabited areas of Croatia and set up the self-declared Serbian Autonomous Oblast of Krajina with covert support from the Serbian government and Serbian paramilitary groups. The Croatian government rapidly lost control of large areas of the republic. In February 1991, the Krajina Serbs declared independence from Croatia and announced that they would unite with Serbia. Other Serb communities around Croatia also announced that they would secede and establish their own militias. Prelude to the battle, the conflict between Serbs and Croats spread to eastern Slavonia in early 1991. On 1 of April, Serb villages around Vukovar and other towns in eastern Slavonia began to erect barricades across main roads. The White Eagles, a Serbian paramilitary group led by Vojislav Seselj, moved into the Serb-populated village of Borovo Selo just north of Vukovar. In mid-April 1991, Goko Sasak, a Croatian government minister and hardline nationalist, personally fired three armbrust shoulder-launched anti-tank missiles at houses inhabited by Serbs in Borovo Selo. There were no casualties, but the attack aggravated and deepened ethnic tensions. On 2 May, Serb paramilitaries ambushed two Croatian police buses in the center of Borovo Selo, killing 12 policemen and injuring 22 more. Three Serbs were also killed. The Battle of Borovo Selo was the worst act of violence that had occurred between ethnic Serbs and Croats since the Second World War. It enraged many Croatians and led to a surge of ethnic violence across Slavonia. Shortly after, units of the Yugoslav People's Army moved into Borovo Selo. The army's intervention was welcomed by local Croatian leaders. But Croatian Deputy Interior Minister Milan Brezic accused the JNA of preventing the Croatian police from dealing with the paramilitaries. Gun battles broke out across the region between rival militias. In Vukovar, Croatians harassed Serb residents, sometimes violently. Croatian police forcibly took over the local radio station, Radio Vukovar, and Serb members of the station's ethnically mixed staff were fired and replaced with Croats. Serb militias systematically blocked transport routes in the predominantly Serb-inhabited countryside around Vukovar, and within days the town could only be reached by an unpaved track running through Croat-inhabited villages. The atmosphere in Vukovar was said to be murderous. On 19 May 1991, the Croatian government held a nationwide referendum on a declaration of sovereignty. In Vukovar, as elsewhere in Croatia, hardline Serb nationalists urged Serbs to boycott the referendum, while moderates advocated using the poll to register opposition to independence. Many local Serbs did vote, but the referendum passed with 94% nationally voting in favor. Violence in and around Vukovar worsened after the independence referendum. Repeated gun and bomb attacks were reported in the town and surrounding villages. 
Sporadic shelling of the city started in June, and increased in intensity throughout the summer. Borovo Nasilje, the Croatian-held northern suburb of Vukovar, sustained a significant shelling on 4 July. Serb paramilitaries expelled thousands of non-Serbs from their homes in the municipality. Croatian paramilitaries, led by Tomislav Mercep, attacked Serbs in and around Vukovar. Between 30 and 86 Serbs were alleged to have disappeared or been killed, and thousands of others fled their homes. A Croatian government representative in Vukovar told the Zagreb authorities that the city is again the victim of terror, armed strife and provocative shootouts with potentially unfathomable consequences. The policy pursued so far has created an atmosphere of terror among the Croatian and Serbian population. Gunmen from both sides burned and looted hundreds of houses and farms in the area. The conflict blurred ethnic lines. Many Serbs who had lived in Vukovar for generations, known as the Staros Diocese or Old Settlers, resisted the propaganda coming from Belgrade and Nin and continued to live peacefully with their Croatian neighbours. The Doljaki, or newcomers, whose families had relocated from southern Serbia and Montenegro to replace the deported Germans after 1945, were the most responsive to nationalist appeals. Paolo Rumors describes how they tried to win the co-ethnics over to the patriotic mobilization, and when they had no success with that, they killed them, plundered their property and goods, or drove them away. The old settlers would not let themselves be stirred up against other nationalities. When Croats fled the fighting they often gave their house keys, for safekeeping to their Serb neighbors, whom they trusted, rather than to the Croatian police. Sabrina P. Ramit comments that the distinctive feature of the war in eastern Slavonia was the mobilization of those who were not integrated into the multicultural life of the cities against urban multiculturalism. The former mayor of Belgrade, Bogdan Bogdanovic, characterizes the attack on Vukovar as an act of herbicide, a deliberate assault on urbanism, opposing forces. By the end of July 1991, an improvised Croatian defense force in Vukovar was almost surrounded by Serbian militias in the neighboring villages. Paramilitaries, Yugoslav People's Army soldiers and Serbian conscripts of the territorial defense forces were present in Serb-inhabited areas. There was a small JNA force in the town barracks in the Sajmista district of Vukovar, surrounded by territory controlled by Croatian forces. Although the two sides were commonly referred to as Croatian and Serbian or Yugoslav, Serbs and Croats as well as many other of Yugoslavia's national groups fought on both sides. The first commander of the attacking force was a Macedonian, and a substantial portion of the Croatian defenders were Serbs and members of other ethnicities. Croatian forces The Croatian force in Vukovar comprised 1,800 men assembled from units of the newly created Croatian National Guard, including 400 members of the 3rd Guards Brigade and the 1st Guards Brigade. The 4th Battalion of the 3rd Guards Brigade was stationed in the city from the beginning, while elements of the 1st Guards Brigade arrived retreating from elsewhere in western Samir. In addition to the guardsmen there were 300 police officers and 1,100 civilian volunteers from Vukovar and nearby communities. The bulk of the force had initially been organized in an improvised manner but was formally reorganized in late September 1991 as the 204th Vukovar Brigade, also known as the 124th Brigade. Volunteers arrived from other parts of Croatia, including from the far-right paramilitary Croatian Defense Forces backed by Dobroslav Paragar's extreme nationalist Croatian Party of Rights. The defenders were a cross-section of Vukovar society, as many as a third were non-Croats, including Serbs, Ruthenians, Hungarians and other ethnicities. About a hundred of the defenders were Serbs. 
According to Zoran Sangat, one of the Croat defenders, we had complete confidence in him. They defended Vukovar alongside us, a 300-strong hospitalian named the Black Legion led by Ali Siljak operated in Vukovar under the Croatian Ministry of the Interior as an anti-terrorist brigade. The Croatian force in Vukovar was commanded by Mile Dedikovic, a former JNA officer who had joined the ZNG. Dedikovic volunteered for a post in Vukovar and took charge of the town's defences. During the siege of Vukovar he was referred to as Jastab. At the time, the Croatian Minister of Defence Sasak publicly claimed that Dedikovic was a Serb, a claim that was later reprinted by independent sources, but was false. Dedikovic's second-in-command, Branko Borkovic, was another former JNA officer who had volunteered for service in Vukovar. The two men established a unified command structure, organized the defenders into a single brigade and implemented an integrated defense system. A defensive ring of six sectors was established, each assigned to one unit within the 204th Brigade. The defenders used a network of cellars, canals, ditches and trenches to redeploy around the sectors as needed. At the start of the battle, they were poorly armed and many were equipped only with hunting rifles. They relied mostly on light infantry weapons but obtained a few artillery pieces and anti-aircraft guns and improvised their own landmines. They also obtained several hundred anti-tank weapons such as M79 and M80 rocket launches but were critically short of ammunition throughout the battle. Although the Croatian government sent some supplies and reinforcements in the early stages, the defenders received little of significance. This was partly because of the difficulty of reaching the town, but may also have been a result of the Croatian government's decision to supply large quantities of arms to the Bosnian Croats in advance of the Bosnian War. In doing so, it starved its own forces of weapons and ammunition. Yugoslav and Serb forces The attacking force included JNA soldiers conscripted from across Yugoslavia, members of the two Chetniks, local Serb militiamen and units of the Yugoslav Navy and the Yugoslav Air Force. At their peak, the Yugoslav and Serb forces in the vicinity of Vukovar numbered about 36,000 troops. They were equipped with heavy artillery, rockets and tanks and supported by aircraft and naval vessels on the Danube. Although the battle was fought primarily by the federal Yugoslav military, the government of Serbia was directly involved. The Serbian Interior Ministry directed the activities of the paramilitaries as well as arming and equipping them. Slobodan Milosevic was later accused of direct involvement. According to Veselin Slivakanin, who was later convicted of war crimes committed at Vukovar, the order to shell Vukovar came from Dedunj, the elite Belgrade quarter where Milosevic lived. At the start of the war in Slovenia, the army still saw itself as the defender of a federal communist Yugoslavia, rather than an instrument of Serbian nationalism. Its head, General Velko Kadijevic, the Yugoslav Minister of Defense and a committed communist, initially sought to forcibly keep Yugoslavia together and proclaimed the army's neutrality in the Serb-Croat conflict. The JNA leadership aimed to cut Croatia in two by seizing the Serb-inhabited inland regions, almost all of the Dalmatian coast and much of central and eastern Croatia. It aimed to force Croatia's political leadership to capitulate and renegotiate its membership of Yugoslavia. The JNA's leadership was not yet dominated by ethnic Serbs, and these early goals reflected the Yugoslav outlook of its multi-ethnic leadership. Kadijevic was half Croat and half Serb. His deputy was a Slovene. The commander of JNA forces in the first phase of the battle was a Macedonian, and the head of the Yugoslav Air Force, which repeatedly bombed Vukovar during the battle, was a Croat. The loss of Slovenia in the Ten-Day War made it impossible to fulfill the original objective of keeping Yugoslavia intact. Many of the Serb members of the army no longer wanted to fight for a multi-ethnic Yugoslavia. 
The army developed an increasingly Serbian character as non-Serbs deserted or refused to be drafted. Some JNA commanders overtly supported the Serb rebels in Croatia and provided them with weapons. Although Kadijevic and other senior JNA commanders initially argued that the JNA must defend all the nations of Yugoslavia, they eventually recognized that they had no chance of achieving their original goals, and through their support behind the rebel Serbs of Croatia, Yugoslav and Serb propaganda portrayed the Croatians as genocidal lustes who had illegally taken over Yugoslav territory and were threatening Serb civilians in a reprise of the anti-Serb pogroms of the Second World War. Kadijevic later justified the JNA's offensive against Vukovar on the grounds that it was part of the backbone of the Croatian army and had to be liberated. The JNA's periodical Narodna army claimed after the battle that Vukovar had for decades been prepared to support German military penetration down the Danube. The paramilitary leader Vojislav Seselj declared, We're all one army. This war is a great test for Serbs. Those who pass the test will become winners. Deserters cannot go unpunished.